hi everyone. Um, so we are here uh, with Lighthouse uh, San Francisco, um, and our talk today is going to be about vision accessibility, uh, specifically with AR and AI tools. Um, so just to introduce myself, my name is Sean Doherty, um, and I work as the manager of corporate relationships uh, within our access technology team uh, at Lighthouse. Jeffrey. Hi everybody, my name is Jeffrey Colon, Director of Access Technology at the Lighthouse. Very happy to be here. So just starting out, um, we wanted to just briefly mention a little bit about our organization. Um, there are a lot of Lighthouse organizations across the US. Um, we're all kind of loosely affiliated agencies. We're all supporting uh, the blind and low vision community in different capacities. Um, our specific organization um, has been around for more than 100 years, so we were founded in the early 1900s, um, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit based in San Francisco. Um, and we're one of the largest uh, blindness-focused organizations um, in the U.S., uh, and we are su uh, supporting blind and low vision people throughout the state of California in a few different capacities. Uh, we're providing educational support, um, training, advocacy, um, and community support as well. Um, we're mostly based uh, or focused on individuals um, in the Bay Area, but uh, through some of our partnerships with state uh, organizations in California, we also provide uh, technology assessments uh, to individuals throughout the state. Um, and we also have partners across the US as well. Uh, so we also wanted to just briefly mention a little bit about our specific team um, that's focused on access technology. Jeffrey. Right. Um, our, uh, we provide, um, we, we have three areas that we provide services. We have the deaf blind department that provide, um, through the I Can Connect program, we provide um, support uh, to deaf blind students. We also have individual and group trainings um, on everything access technology for blind and low vision users, computers, and smartphones, wearables, smart speakers, and everything that is coming that, that, that will come. And we also partner, the third area is our corporate relationships, where we partner with different organizations, stakeholders, and community partners, uh, startups, major players in the field, um, in, on everything access tech. It could be user research, it could be corporate training, it could be a develop a, a develop of a new website or a new project, and we work on things like checking for accessibility, integrations, um, and etc. So those are sort of the areas that we cover on the access tech department. Yes, and through those services, um, we get a lot of exposure to new and innovative technologies. Um, we've worked on uh, user research within autonomous vehicle space, um, and now uh, with our talk today, um, we're gonna also highlight some areas um, specific to AR and AI um, that are related to the vision accessibility space. Um, so with that, um, we want to kind of start off with an introduction to how um, AI has been integrated um, historically into some blindness and low vision focused tools. Um, this is a point that Jeffrey has been emphasizing over the last couple of days that uh, although generative AI now is a really hot topic, um, AI tools have been used in the blindness community in different capacities for quite some time. Uh, so they're not necessarily as new maybe to our community as they are to other, uh, other communities. Um, one specific type of AI-based uh, tool that many blind and low vision individuals are utilizing are optical character recognition or OCR apps. Um, and essentially, these are apps um, that are able to work with the device's camera, uh, so on an iPhone or Android, uh, to be able to process things like text and images, um, as well as information on the surrounding environment, um, and provide the user with a speech output uh, to describe that scene. Um, and so some examples of these tools are apps such as Seeing AI, uh, which has been developed by Microsoft and is available on iPhones. Um, there's also an app called Envision AI, uh, which Envision has also incorporated um, a pair of glasses uh, that um, allow you to not have to necessarily just use your phone's camera. You can also use the cameras on the glasses to look around your environment, um, process that information uh, into text through AI. Um, and then Google has also developed Lookout, uh, which is an OCR app that's available on Android devices. Um, so these OCR apps are incredibly 
useful. Um, they incorporate AI, uh, and in certain aspects, they also incorporate uh, AR as well. Jeffrey, anything you want to add on that before we go to the demos? Or? Okay, cool. Um, so next, we put together a couple short uh, demos um, of uh, some of the features of seeing AI that are incorporating AI as well as AR, um, just to give a couple of examples. So the first demo um, will show the short text feature, um, which is basically using the, the camera to process uh, text in the environment. And we demoed this with a business card. Yeah, for this one, um, before we put it in, uh, we wanted to make sure, um, wanted to reiterate that yesterday we were thinking about, wow, we will have people on Zoom, so probably live demos will not work for us. So we were thinking about what to do, and we decided, okay, let's see if we can just create one take videos, whatever it, it gets, so you will, you will see some funny parts there. So <laughs> just wanted to make sure, <laughs> just wanted to give a context of what will happen. So let's go. All right, so let's play the first one. For this one, we will use the Seeing AI application, and we will use AI to basically auto-detect text. So everything that I pointed with my camera, it will be read by the application. So here I have a version, a low vision version of my business car is like a probably four by six or similar. So I will use live text. I already have the seeing AI application on the live text mode. So I will be close it here. Lighthouse for the blind and visually impaired. 1,155 Market Street, 10th floor, San Francisco, CA 94,103, Maine, 415, 431, 1481, VP, 415, 255, 5906. You see the bumping on the camera there. So um, basically uh, that part is, is very interesting because um, this is just Life, whatever I, we are pointing to the camera, it will be read if it's text. So we did it with the card there. So, yeah, and Microsoft has made a recent update um, to this particular feature uh, where it's a little bit more stable because uh, it used to be a little bit annoying every time you would slightly move your camera and point it at I something else, reading. it yeah. will immediately jump the focus. Uh, now it kind of reads out the content uh, that was captured before it switches to something else, which is a nice uh, update. Um, we also wanted to demo or show another demo video um, of another part of Seeing AI, um, specifically the ability to um, use part of the app called Scene Preview, um, as well as Explore Mode. Um, and this is an aspect of Seeing AI uh, that also incorporates a little bit of AR functionality as well. On this one, we will use the Seeing AI application to take a picture of a scene. The AI component will tell us what is on the picture, and then we will use AR to explore what is on it. So this is the scene that we will take, we will take in a picture, see on the right side, and then I already took the picture of it. Share button. And let's see what AI told us it is. Save photo, button, share. Share, save photo, a laptop on a table. It says that it's a laptop on a table, but I think that there are more things on it. So let's see. Save photo, button, share, button, explore photo. Button. We will use explore photo. And if I double tap on this button, it will use AR to see what's on it. Cancel, button. Eight items detected. Move your finger over the screen to explore. Okay, so I will start exploring what is on the picture, on the scene. A telephone on a table. A telephone. I found a telephone. A screen. A screen. A laptop on a table. A laptop. A telephone on a table. A keyboard. Contains text. N. The N laptop N keyboard even. A, a keyboard. A business card. Contains text. Lighthouse. For the blind and visually impaired. Jeffrey Cullen, Director, Access Technology, 1,155 Market Street, 10th Floor, San Francisco, CA 94,103, 4156947368, colon at org. It even detected my business card there and read the entire text of the business card. It's really cool. A keyboard contains a blue bottle. 
a blue bottle. Oh, this is great. So, so in that example, um, Microsoft has incorporated um, a little bit of spatial sound there as well. Um, when Jeffrey was exploring the around the image, um, and this is using we we had voiceover turned on on the iPhone as well. Um, and when he was exploring around, you could hear the spatial sound as he was kind of moving around the image. And then every time he engaged with one of those objects in the image, uh, there was kind of like a pinging sound as well before it told him uh, what the object was. Um, and we think the explore mode is pretty cool because as you saw in the demo, um, the initial scene preview only detected uh, a laptop on the table. But when we explored, there were actually eight items that were within view of that photo. Um, and it was a pretty accurate description um, of a desk. Uh, in a hotel room with a, with a phone, with a laptop, uh, with a water bottle, and also a business card. And even though the business card is incredibly small, um, the, uh, the app was able to pick up that text and, and read it aloud. Yeah, the, so. the AI was able to do the OCR and convert it and read it. Yep. Yeah, so we think this is a pretty cool example of what's, what's possible, um, kind of putting AR and AI together uh, in an application. Uh, and it's increasingly um, getting better uh, for the Seeing AI app. So with that, the application also has some other modes. It has a new mode uh, called World that allows you to um, you see, especially if you have like a newer phone that has a lidar uh, camera, you will be able to like point it uh, to diff a to a scene, and it will start giving you automatic object detection of certain things that to be on the way and some relationships too, like relationships between object and space. Yeah, in that particular mode as well, um, it, we didn't demo it, uh, but when objects are identified, um, it will basically generate a text box uh, that kind of hovers above that object. And when you touch on it, it will tell you that it's a laptop or a phone, um, but it kind of transposes that in as an AR effect as well, um, which is also kind of cool. Um, so with that, uh, we want to move on to uh, a little bit of a different incorporation. So um, as we mentioned, OCR apps have been around for a while. They are available on um, major smartphones and used by a lot of blind and low vision individuals. Um, however, a lot of the mainstream uh, tech developers, uh, such as Apple and Google, have started to incorporate some of this functionality directly into the devices themselves. Um, so a lot of the smartphone cameras now have the ability to do text and object uh, detection. Um, so for example, um, on the iPhone, uh, within the camera app, there's now a live text feature um, where you can explore a photo, and if there's any text in that photo, such as a phone number or an email, um, and if you're using voiceover or even if you're not, you can engage with that text. You can call a phone number directly um, instead of having to transcribe it or, uh, and then paste it into your phone app. Um, Google has also integrated this in a couple of Android models. Um, that feature is called Scan in Android cameras. Um, and that's available on some of the Samsung Galaxy models and Google Pixel models. Um, so we also put together a short demo um, on an iPhone. Um, to show off the live text capability. Um, we also use it, we used a business card as well. So probably by the end of this, everyone will know Jeffrey's uh, contact yeah, information <laughs> by heart. Um, <laughs> but let's go ahead and show this one. Hi, on this one, we will test how to use the detect text on the iPhone. So I already took a picture of a business card and let's see what it says. Um, I will start swiping off to right. Today, 10.22 p.m. Edit button. Looking for the detect text button. Let's see. Actions. But detect text button. There you go. And I'll double tap on it. Selected. Detect text. And let's see what it says. Detected text. Lighthouse. Act edit. Today. Edit. Again. Actions. Detected text. Lighthouse. For the blind and visually impaired. Jeffrey Cullen. That's me. Director. Access Technology. 1155 Market Street. 10th floor. San Francisco. CA 94103. 41569476868. It detects everything. And one cool thing about it is that if I continue swiping, 
Colin at lighthouse-sf.org. Email. Detected data. Address. 1155 Market Street, 10th floor, San Francisco, CA 94103. Button. It presents the address on a button so I can double tap on it and I can add it to contacts. I can look up on into maps, for example. Let's see. Detected data. Phone number. 4156947368. Button. Says it detected the phone number and it presents it on a button. So if I double tap on it. Detected. 4156947368. Call Jeffrey Cullen. Button, and I can call myself here and complete like if I am wanted to make a phone call with this one. Let's test it. Double tap and Double we'll tap. place that call. Call Jeffrey Cullen. Button. Expanded. Work. Four one five six nine four phone. seven so three six eight. Double tap. It Button. should. There we go. The call's placed. Yeah, no one available because I'm calling myself. <laughs> So also the um, other, um, like for example, the uh, the magnifier app on the iPhone has uh, other uh, features that you can use like a door detection or object detection. And some of the new features that Apple just debuted are that now you will be able to use the LiDAR camera. And if you start pointing to like, for example, a touch surface with your fingers and like a microwave, and you can start see uh, the application could even give you the button that you are on it. For example, bending machine, you start moving, uh, your, uh, you point it with the camera, you point it, uh, you touch uh, one of the buttons and it will tell you what is on it. So you can do it yourself. So you see an AI and AR there. So I think that that's yeah. part of it. And the, the door detection is pretty neat as well. Um, it can help identify the type of door, uh, if it swings inward, outward, if it's sliding. Um, and also uh, things around the area, if there's signage and things like that. So uh, we feel like this is only the beginning and this technology will get even better. Um, and hopefully the, the phone's cameras for iPhones and Androids can detect even more information uh, going forward. Um, so with that, we Hi. will... On this oh. One, oh. We will Hi, on this one, we will test how to use the detect text. Hi, on this one, there we, go. we will... Okay. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, we wanted to shift gears a little bit uh, to talk a little bit about uh, how AI has been incorporated into smart speakers and smart assistants um, and how this is a really helpful assistive technology as well uh, for blind and low vision individuals. Um, so uh, smart speakers are utilizing AI uh, through smart assistants um, within the devices itself to uh, basically output um, information, uh, audio output of information, um, and providing voice prompts to users. So examples of these smart speakers, we're all probably fam familiar with many of these, but Google Home or Google Nest, um, those incorporate the Google Assistant, uh, the Amazon Echo speakers, which incorporate Alexa, um, and then Apple also has the HomePod speakers that incorporate Siri. Um, and so we wanted to show off a little demo uh, to highlight how AI is being used um, within translation. Uh, so specifically within the Google Translate app, uh, we demoed on an iPhone how you can use the assistant to have a real-time conversation uh, that's translated uh, between English and Spanish. So basically on that one, the um, you can do also do it on a speaker. So if you have a Google speaker, you can say uh, translate the conversation and then the assistant will ask you for the languages that you want to translate. On this one, we did it with, uh, the, uh, with the translated application and the Google assistant will be like the interpreter that allow us to communicate between Spanish and English. On this one, we will use AI to translate a conversation, to instantly translate a conversation. We will do it from Spanish to English. And we will use the Google Translate application, but you can also do this on any Google speaker. So Back. let's explore the application a little bit. Conversation, heading. We will translate a conversation. Tutorial. Button. Toca el micrófono para hablar. Toca el micrófono para hablar. Tap mic to talk. Tap mic to talk. Spanish. Español. Button. Okay, from Spanish. Original language. Spanish. Español. To Button. English. So, let's start. 
Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hello, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Lo estoy haciendo muy bien. ¿Cómo estás? Aquí aprendiendo sobre accesibilidad en los entornos virtuales. Here learning about accessibility in virtual environments. Oh, wow, that's so interesting. I'd love to learn more about accessibility in virtual environments and how blind and low vision users can use this technology. Vaya, eso es tan interesante. Me encantaría aprender más sobre accesibilidad y entornos virtuales y cómo los usuarios ciegos y con baja visión pueden usar esta tecnología. Claro que sí. Puedo enseñarte, pero solo lo haré si me pagas dinero. <laughs> sure, I can teach you, but I'll only do it if you pay me the money. <laughs> so nice. the, the translation, especially the, the, the English to Spanish part there, it was a longer one, but it was quite accurate. Very interesting there. And so with that, um, we wanted to also talk a little bit about um, AI generative tools, since of course, uh, this is a very popular topic. Uh, so things like uh, ChatGPT, Google's Bard, uh, Microsoft incorporating uh, versions of GPT-3, GPT-4 into Bing AI, um, and ways in which this can be used um, as an assistive technology, and also the um, current accessibility um, of these types of tools. Uh, so, you know, we kind of see these tools as a complementary tool that can be assistive um, and, and assist with productivity. Um, up to this point, there has been some aspects of accessibility that have been incorporated, um, particularly um, compatibility with a lot of assistive technology tools that blind and low vision users are already relying on. So compatibility with screen readers, uh, with zoom magnification tools, um, and also um, some pretty cool integrations around haptics that we're already seeing. Uh, so uh, ChatGPT now has um, an iOS app and that app um, can be used with voiceover. Uh, there is um, dictation available so you can voice type uh, prompts uh, into the app. Uh, and when you have voiceover on, uh, when ChatGPT is generating those responses back to you, um, they'll be automatically read aloud uh, with voiceover. Um, and haptics are also being incorporated a bit on the back of the device. Uh, so as ChatGPT is typing out the response, you're actually feeling a haptic vi vibration every time it's typing a word, uh, which is kind of a cool uh, implementation. So uh, we'll see where this goes as far as uh, accessibility, but at least the initial aspects of these types of tools um, seem to be fairly fairly accessible. Yeah, we recognize that there is, uh, like in all of the presentations that we have this morning, there's there still are lots of, of paths to go to work on that, accessibility, privacy, sources, those are very important. But we're seeing more even, even applications for uh, integrating this, like we talked a little bit about the Envision AI glasses so those will start incorporating um, GPT-2 so now you will be able to point with your camera with your glasses and the application will start uh, you can ask to uh, certain information in regards to what you're seeing and and you can allow, uh, you can get more information about a particular area that you are interested in what are you if, uh, what are you pointing with the camera we also see in that on the Oh, one of the, I forgot the application, oh, the... Which one? Um, in one of the, um, oh my God, I'm close. Uh -huh. So in other applications like uh, like volunteers, like you can take a picture. Oh, like be my eyes. Uh, be my eyes, thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. No worries. <laughs> more coffee, I need more coffee. <laughs> so on the be my eyes application, and you will see integrating there, like they call it the virtual balance. Uh, volunteer that allows you to basically you take a picture and AI will describe the picture and then you can ask GPT information about parts of the pictures. For example, in, in the picture you see a 
a person wearing a New York Mets hat or a New York Yankees hat, then you can ask GPT about information of that particular team or that particular part of the, of the picture that you are interested on. So other uses that we are seeing um, of AI-generated tools, for example, and, and we mentioned that yesterday, transforming thoughts, like having a person that maybe is teaching a, for example, a deaf blind student, um, they, we can generate a picture based on concepts. So if we're trying to illustrate a person a concept, we can, uh, we can tell the application to generate an image, and maybe we can even use 3D printed to create a figure of about that, a tactile figure that, that a, a deaf blind person can see the, the environment. So those are some areas that we can, that we can see opportunities in there. We also see in, um, in trans translation on office apps that are using AI generated tools to create in trans translation about your entire document or maybe a word that you found uh, uh, you're working on an English uh, text and you found on a Spanish or other language text and you want to know more information, you can do it straight from your office document right away. So those are some of the applications and some of the things that we're seeing integrating um, AI generated tours. So maybe I'm visiting, you wanted to visit San Francisco, San Francisco on a weekend, you can use AI generated tool to tell you the 10 best places that you can go or to even generate an itinerary of your visit. And with that, um, the area we want to uh, kind of focus on for the last part of our presentation um, is around the accessibility of AR um, and different ways that developers are starting to think about uh, these experiences, um, particularly with some of the new uh, recent launches with, with Apple's Vision Pro uh, and um, looking at those types of AR experiences. Uh, Apple uh, recently uh, released some uh, guidelines and examples uh, of accessible AR experiences for developers um, at the recent um, Worldwide Developer Conference. Um, and so we wanted to show um, just a brief uh, portion of this, uh, of this video uh, that highlights um, how uh, an AR uh, device like Vision Pro um, can be incorporated with uh, screen readers like VoiceOver uh, to basically identify objects uh, in a scene um, and make sense of them. And so the example that um, Apple highlights in this video um, is a short, or is, is a small game that they created that's called Happy Beam. And it's basically um, transposing uh, clouds into the environment. Uh, and those clouds are kind of frowning clouds. And the user is able to hold up a heart gesture while wearing the Vision Pro headset and turn the frowning clouds into happy clouds. Um, the challenge is that experience is not um, initially accessible, um, but through some of the integrations with the uh, AR uh, kit, um, developers are able to leverage uh, the capabilities of VoiceOver, and VoiceOver is able to actually identify the current state of those clouds and allow the user to change the state in real time. Uh, and so we wanted to show this off as an example because we feel like this is kind of what's coming uh, for AR. Um, this is only the beginning, but um, but yeah. AR and VR, and also we uh, um, just uh, give more, co more more context on the video. Um, so one of the ways that now, uh, on the Vision OS um, operating system, you will be able to, if you're using VoiceOver, for example, you will be able to pinch with your uh, your fingers to do voiceover gestures like swiping left and right and um, double tap basically i think that the double tap is the left uh, the middle finger uh, pinch uh, on the left hand and and so on so on this one uh, in the part of the video that we will put in um they will in uh, they will do an uh, input gestures modes that are input gesture mode that allows the user to do re, uh, gesture with their hands and pass those voiceover um, integration so the person can integrate, uh, can work directly with the environment. So I think that that's the big Cloud grumpy, cloud grumpy. So that it's clear what is happening and what in a grumpy to happy. Always announce any meaningful event to voiceover so that it's clear what is happening and what interactions are being performed. For example, in a fully immersive app, 
anytime you enter a new room or environment, make sure to announce that change in context to VoiceOver and describe any new items that are available in the world. Also consider utilizing sounds when actions are performed. The sounds that play in Happy Beam when a cloud turns happy are a great way to keep the app feeling fun and spatial, even if we can't see the visual transformation of the cloud. Let's take a look at our app one last time with some announcements added. When the game starts, we'll enable direct gesture mode with a left index finger, triple pinch, and hold. Then we can make heart gestures to turn the clouds happy and get feedback about all of the interactions. Three, two, one. Happy beam. Three clouds above and in front of you to the right. Direct gestures enabled. Press the crown to egg. Casting beam. Grumpy cloud hit. Hiding beam. Awesome. We received some great feedback there about all of the interactions as they were being performed. Our app is shaping up to have some great voiceover support, but there's still a lot you can do to support people with low vision who aren't using your app with voiceover, especially if you're building any custom components or controls. Just like on all other Apple platforms, make sure your so app responds very, very to So a very simple change. example, but we just thought this was a cool way to show um, how voiceover uh, could be incorporated uh, and also using gestures in a way that is accessible. Um, this is probably only the beginning, but I think this could translate to a lot of games and other really cool um, AR experiences, uh, you know, with the Vision Pro, but also with other uh, types of uh, hardware and other, other devices for AR and VR. And with that, I think that we are open to questions from the audience. So, let's see. Thank you. Any questions? Any? <laughs> uh, thank you for your talk again. Um, I was wondering, uh, with like Vision Pro and like headsets coming out, I was wondering if, like, off just the top of your head, there are any like pros and cons of a headset versus uh, a mobile app like Seeing AI and um for either pros and cons of the headset like what areas would be important to focus on that would be helpful for these features sure um yeah i mean i think there are definitely uh pros and cons um we haven't had a chance to get our hands on a vision pro just yet to comment on the exact experience uh, but was having a conversation with people last night about uh headsets and different form factors and thinking about haptics and uh, I'm not sure how this uh, particular form factor from Apple is incorporating haptics, uh, but given that it doesn't have a, a controller, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's haptics incorporated into the headpiece of the headset or not. Uh, but if there isn't, I think that might be a, you know a missed opportunity, and maybe there's other ways to integrate uh, other type of haptic hardware. Um, so I think that's one type of trade-off. Um, I mean, I think the OCR apps are kind of nice because you know they're on your mobile device. People are already using those devices with screen readers. They're able to take them everywhere. Um, the one downside, though, is when you're re trying to read really long text, like if you want to read an entire book, uh, holding up your phone you know, over text and trying to OCR every page is not really the most effective way. Right. Um, and it's hard to kind of scan every single page and go back to it. So if you're using like a, um, a, a headset or glasses, uh, like we mentioned from like Envision AI that have that OCR capability built in, it's a little bit easier if you're trying to read a longer form content. Probably not an entire book, right? But yeah, but you yeah. will be able to read well, more I, more more clearly. Yeah, but hopefully over time, whether it's with Vision Pro or other headsets, that that type of technology will be built in and will be very seamless. And yeah, and like like Sean mentioned, we don't know uh, exactly where where they're heading, but we know that they are they will integrate some apps. So maybe they, they will be able to integrate seeing AI as well, because there will be integrating, uh, for example, iPad apps into the into the Vision o, into the Vision Pro OS. So definitely, th there could be some opportunities there. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. Sure. Yeah, this is uh, Dylan over here. Um, 
I'm really curious. We, we saw in uh, Liv's talk just before you about um, the possibility of using um, generative AI to make new things in a very naturalistic way. You know, like make me a room and put all these academic papers in it and define summaries, things like that. Um, I guess, is there a lot of enthusiasm for people in the Lighthouse community or other folks you know about that type of um, yes. new, new activities? Yes, no, definitely. I think that uh, we, we, that's why we talk about like a transforming thoughts, like taking that opportunity to, to, um, to work um, and to work in, even on, on, for us on our training, we try to describe a concept and we will try to, uh, to explain it. Maybe the, way, the best way will be generating an image. And we also have a media accessibility lab, that, uh, lab design at the Lighthouse that we will be able to even print those imaginations that we have that we, we put it into, in, into our thoughts. We can even print it on Braille graphics and have them there. And, and and work with the user. We we are starting to work on on some things like that. So yeah, the, this is just like we said. This is just the beginning, and we are very excited about that. About the possibilities for us in the organization, working with different departments, and within with us or with other partners, and explore these areas. I think there's also a lot of excitement around um, like what we were demoing with seeing AI with the, the capabilities of the explore mode um, for AI to be able to accurately identify objects and have a good description of them. Uh, the, I think the hope and excitement in the community is that these AI tools, when they're generating things like images, uh, they'll be able to go beyond just a basic uh, kind of like an alt text description, uh, something that's a little bit more meaningful and really gives that context uh, to the user. And I think people are excited about that. Uh, so maybe an, an equivalent experience uh, with an AI tool that can actually generate an image as opposed to uh, yeah. analyzing something in the environment. Sure. Awesome, and I think we have one more question from online um, from David Vosnakos. Uh, I'm curious about your thoughts of the integration of haptics with screen reading software like VoiceOver. Should the two go together in any iteration of XR development? Yeah, and we 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 already seen it. Uh, we already seen it even on that explore, explore mode that we were trying. We uh, I did not mention it, but every time that I found an object, I can I can feel the haptic feedback. For example, we're seeing that with my watch, if I'm if I'm navigating and if I have to turn right on, on Google Maps, Apple Maps, I can hear I can feel that haptic feedback on my watch too. That let me know that a term is coming. And so yes, haptic feedback are very important for me. For example. I try to turn off voiceover sounds and because I use the haptic feedback to let me know what's out there, like that gesture that allows me to go to the home screen. I don't want people to hear my boop, boop. So what I do is I turn off uh, some of the voiceover sounds and then I use haptic feedback to let me know that I perform a gesture. So yes, I think that this will be more integrated. We are also seeing that integration into VR spaces as well. So yes, definitely, I think that this is this will be a good complement. And if, if it's implemented co correctly, like with audio, with descriptions, and with some feedback, definitely will be a good complement, like different experience like a XR and VR and so on. Yeah, it does seem to be something that was um, missing when we showed the the Apple demo that you can do the gestures with your hands with the Vision Pro, uh, and that can work with VoiceOver to swipe and things like that. But there's not a haptic feedback there. So maybe over time there will be like an alternative controller or another piece of hardware that could be integrated where there could be that haptic feedback because we do think it's it's useful and like Jeffrey mentioned, it is integrated into other um, use cases for VoiceOver with other applications. Um, and I think it is something that the community um, values. So we'll, we'll see how it's incorporated in long term, but we hope that it is. Great. And then I think we've got one more, one more very quick question here because I'm a big softie. Okay. It was just a thought that occurred to me uh, as, uh, as you mentioned the Apple Watch haptics is uh, Apple didn't mention this during the Vision Pro uh, presentation, but I'll bet if you have an Apple Watch, that's where they're going to pass haptics into, yeah. uh, so totally. just go buy another product. Yep. But <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing that <laughs> I'm they, guessing they have too. already thought of that. <laughs> I'm guessing too that will be, that's what will be happening. So thank you everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, fantastic presentation.